Hello, hello, federal employees, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this episode of Plan Your Federal Benefits, where we give you the answers to get the most out of your retirement, make sure you're on track for your long-term goals, to maximize your benefits, reduce taxes, and just be prepared and be on top of life. I think that's what this is all about, being organized, being on top of, top of your stuff, knowing what you got, getting the most out of it. That is the goal with every episode, to make you think, to make you learn, and then to help you live a better life. That's what we're all trying to do, is improve our lives, get better, and move forward. So, if you are watching this on YouTube, so sorry for the light coming through the window. It's perfect where the blind just, it just lined up where the sun shoots right through, <laughs> hits me right here. So, just, just ignore that. Okay, so let's jump right in. Today, we are talking about a what-if scenario. So basically, the reason I call it that is whenever I work with clients, I run what-if scenarios. I'm like, okay, what if this happens? What if that happens? Are you going to be prepared? Is the, is the question that we are answering with every one of these what-if scenarios. What if you become disabled? What if you pass away during this time of your life? What if you pass away now? What, you want to look at every single scenario that could possibly happen so that you know where you stand, right? And some scenarios say, hey, you know, I could get insurance or something like that, but I'm going to take the risk. And that's fine. There's no perfect solution for everything. Sometimes it's just a matter of knowing the risks you're taking, and that's fine. It's just a matter of understanding exactly what, what situation you and your spouse would be in, in every situation. And now I'm going to talk about one situation, one scenario that I often find is a huge gap in many federal employees' plan. Um, and they really need to fill this gap if they want to just make sure no matter what them and their spouse are going to be taken care of. So this gap occurs when someone passes away, the federal employee, the breadwinner specifically, passes away before they retire. Now, when many people think about planning for the future, they think about retirement, they think about their TSP, retirement income, which is awesome. And many people do think about, okay, if I did pass away in retirement, what would my spouse be left with? That's why people think about survivor benefits for their pension, social security benefits, all those things, their TSP. That's awesome. But what if you pass away before you retire? Is your spouse going to have enough income? Are they going to be able to keep the benefits? All these questions like, okay, what if that happened, right? And many federal employees have life insurance. Some, sometimes not enough. It just depends. Just listen to this whole, this whole thing to the end and then think about, okay, what makes sense for me? Okay, so there are four main reasons. There's other reasons as well that this area, this gap, this scenario is troublesome for many federal employees. Let me read them off to you. Okay, number one, before people retire, many couples still have higher expenses, meaning mortgages might still not be paid off, maybe auto loans, maybe student loans. I don't know. There's lots of things that could be there. For you, maybe you have everything paid off. I don't know. But many people, before they retire, they have higher expenses because they have debts. They have things they need to take care of. So if someone, the breadwinner passes away, there's still higher expenses. Number two, if the federal employee passes away and they had at least 10 years of service, the surviving spouse is eligible for what they call a survivor annuity. It's very similar to the survivor benefit that you'd get if you already retired, but it's going to be on a lesser amount because you don't have as many years of service as you would when you retire. And so it doesn't even come even close to replacing your salary. So that's number two. Number three, your spouse may be eligible for survivor benefits from Social Security. The problem is, since it's, you're still working, your spouse is still probably pretty young. And the earliest they'd be able to start these survivor benefits is age 60. But if they do start at 60 or any time before their full retirement age, which is 67, 66 for most people, then it's going to be a reduced benefit. So if people pass away earlier than that, they have a large amount of years of no income or little income that they need to fill. So also number four, the spouse may not be able to access the TSP, other savings and retirement accounts before 59 and a half without penalty. So there's lots of these little nuances with lots of rules and from all the systems, whether it's your federal system, social security, retirement accounts, that it makes it difficult that if the federal employee, if the breadwinner dies 
before you retire, there's lots of things that you want to make sure your spouse is going to be okay with, that they're going to be taken care of, they're going to be fine. So I'm going to walk you through an example of kind of what this might look like um, if this was to happen. Every person's situation is dramatically different, so I can't get too specific, but I'll try just to share an example of what it might look like for you and some solutions that might make sense for you. Okay, so let's say there's a couple. They're 55 years old, right? And the federal employee spouse passes away. And so leaving their spouse who they didn't work very much because the surviving spouse actually stayed at home with the kids during the last 20, 30 years, so they don't have a ton of work experience and so going to get a job may be an option but their salary will probably be pretty low depending maybe your situation is completely different I don't know I'm just sharing an example of why this might be a big issue okay so the surviving spouse would be eligible for the survivor benefit like I said but because the federal employee had not worked a full career then their pension would be lower because the survivor benefit is calculated based on if they would have retired the day they died. And so the benefit's going to be much lower than if they would have done the full career, let's say 62 or whatever age they're planning to retire to have the credible service they needed to have the pension they'd want. And so most of the time, the survivor benefit's only going to replace maybe 8, 10, 15% max of their salary. It's not going to be a huge amount. It's going to be some, which is it's going to be nice, but it's not going to be a huge amount. So you just have to recognize that. And, and things that will come out of that is still FEHB premiums, other premiums. So by the time you actually see any money, it's going to be a lot lower after taxes, all those things. So just keep that in mind. Also, this couple still has a mortgage, right? They're going to pay it off in the next five years, but for those five years, income or expenses are going to be a lot higher, right? One mortgage, let's say the payment's relatively low, depending on when you live, let's say $1,500, right? In a year, that adds up very, very quickly, right? And so that adds a huge expense to that survivor, surviving spouse that um, if the mortgage would have been paid off or something else, that would not have been there. It would have made it easier for them to fill in the gaps with other things. Okay, let's see here. So because the surviving spouse didn't have a ton of work experience and, and work history, they aren't eligible for much Social Security benefits on their own record. And so, like I said, they are eligible for a higher survivor benefit based on the work history of the federal employee. But if they start at 60, which is the earliest stage they could start survivor benefits, it's going to be about 70% of what it would be if they waited until their full retirement age. And so, Generally, for this example, let's say someone's 55 and they're not going to start survivor benefits till 67. Well, that's 12 years, right? And how, how do we fill that gap? How, how do we make that happen? And even when they do start survivor benefits, well, they have that plus a little of the survivor annuity from your federal work service. And so they're not going to have a ton of income then either. So how do we, how do we fill this gap and make sure that they're going to be taken care of? And there's no perfect solution. Um, other than just having lots of money, right? <laughs> but um, there are a few things that you can do to have a plan in place so that you know they're going to be taken care of. Okay, so one possible solution is, you know, just plan on them working, right? Let's say you you run the numbers, say, hey, if I did pass away, this is kind of what you'd be getting from all these different sources. Um, it's not going to be enough to cover your living and to maintain your standard of living. So, you know, maybe let's plan on you just getting a job if, if needed. And, and maybe they're okay with that. I don't know. You have to look at your situation, your spouse, and see what makes sense and and um, what they're able to do. You know, maybe a spouse is disabled or I don't know. I don't know every situation. Just make sure you look at yours to see, okay, is that a viable option? Also, you can plan on, on them maybe lowering their standard of living or maybe downsizing their home or expenses may change some when one spouse dies. Um, most of the time it doesn't change, it doesn't go to 50%. I rarely see that. It generally doesn't happen because you still have to have a home, you still have to have a car, and so you can't split things in half very easily, especially the big expenses. And so generally it's not 50%, so you want to make sure that um, you do the math for you. Okay, another great option is life insurance, right? I, I don't sell life insurance, I don't get paid to sell life insurance, but when the clients need it, when I say, hey, based on these what-if scenarios, if something happened here, 
your spouse would be toast, you know? And so it can be a great tool to fill the gap. And, and one way that people use life insurance is, let's say they have a mortgage. And without the mortgage, let's say their spouse is gonna have enough income, but with the mortgage, they won't. Maybe they get enough life insurance to pay that mortgage off if something happened. So that if they passed away, the mortgage goes away, the surviving spouse's expenses come way down and they're able to be fine, right? That may be a solution, maybe not. Maybe they just need life insurance to cover just daily expenses, right? That just come up because their income just dropped dramatically and they and they won't have enough. So basically, I, I know this is vague. I, I really wish I could give you real, real numbers of a uh, situation, but it, this, it, this kind of what if scenario stuff, it really depends on your specific situation. The reason I bring it up is just so you think about it. Right? Many people do have the F-E-G-L-I, the Fegley, or some sort of life insurance. Just make sure you have enough. And some people actually have too much, right? Sometimes they have plenty of income and their spouse is gonna be fine and they have too much and they're paying more than they need, right? So you have to look at your situation. And my goal with this podcast, this YouTube channel, is not to fix your problems because first, I can't do that. And second, it's just not practical, right? But um, my goal is to give you answers, give you ideas, and make you think about different things so that you can go to your life and say, okay, for me, how does this apply? How does this work for me? And is my spouse gonna be okay? If, if my spouse passes away, am I gonna be okay? Right, that, that's a valid question as well. You wanna think through all the what-if scenarios to say, okay, we're gonna be okay no matter what. And I may, I may come off calloused by talking about this so frankly, but um, I guess I'm used to it. I'm a financial planner, I talk about this all the time, life insurance and death and disability and all these things, I'm, I'm used to it, first of all. But also, I think it is so empowering to look at your situation, take action, and know that you're gonna be prepared no matter what, at least for me. Life is so much less stressful when I don't have to worry about the wettest because they're taking care of, they're taking care of I've taken the proper steps so that no matter what happens to me or my spouse, my family is gonna be taken care of, I'm gonna be taken care of, my spouse is gonna be taken care of, and we're gonna be okay. I think that's what it all comes down to, is just being organized and being on top of your life and being with it, knowing what you have, being prepared, and getting the most out of life, right? It's, it's much less about money, it's much more about just making sure that we are set up for a great life that we want and our spouse is set up for a great life that they want, and that um, all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed, all those things that matter to create a great life. So those are my thoughts. Hopefully it's helpful. Please, if you have any questions, put in the comments below. I can't answer all of them, especially if it's very specific about your situation. I often just can't, can't get to all that, <laughs> but um, if there's any generic questions, I'm, I'm happy to try to give some resources, give some links to some websites where you can find more information and learn about your federal benefits and your retirement. So have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time.